Hello, it is Monday, January 31st, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Monday puzzle, and I see there are some circles on the grid, so some circled cells. So, I don't know, happy Monday to me, I suppose. Looks looks like something I'll enjoy. And this edition that I may well enjoy is brought to us by uh, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And today, I would like to thank Josh Lucas, as well as a new benefactor who's uh, managing to uh, get in to the last day of January, David Innes. So thank you and welcome, David Innes, as a new benefactor, as well as, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. If you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign, which gets you access, to, well, gets you ownership, possession of that Let's Check the Crosses Daily Solve mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. But of course, If you join the Patreon campaign at any level, you get access to the full panoply of uh, bonus solves that have been posted there to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level, at any time. I very much appreciate it. And um, if you would like to stick around until the end of this video, I will also discuss some comments on yesterday's video, some clues from yesterday's puzzle. There actually are a fair number, which I suppose isn't a big surprise because yesterday was a big Sunday grid. But for now, let's solve today's Monday puzzle. Why not? This has been constructed by Eric Bornstein, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. Eric Bornstein uh, has done a handful of New York Times puzzles before, so no, no newcomer to the puzzle. And it will be themed. And of course, we do see those circled cells, so those will surely tie into the theme in some way. And it should be fairly gentle. It's a Monday. It's the beginning of the week. So let's get started. Fertile soil. Could be loam, perhaps. Nice loamy soil. And Bert who played the Cowardly Lion. So this would be in The Wizard of Oz. Bert Lahr, I think. Is it spelled L-A-H-R? I think so. Let's check the crosses on that to be sure, though. So pay to get in a card game could be the ante in a poker game, for instance. And an inverted pose seen in breakdancing and yoga. I'm not sure offhand. What about... Yeah, we'll have to get some crosses on that. So here we have our what looks like our first theme answer with, well, or uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's ju- maybe the theme is just con- uh, constrained to the circled cells. I don't know. We'll have to see. With 21 across, broadcast unit that may operate with 50,000 watts. And then 21 is just 20 across, so it will continue the answer here. Is it radio something? Broadcast unit. Radar? No. Radio? Not sure. Uh, let's see, fit for military service. So I think this is a classification used in the United States Selective Service System, the, what, what what would populate a draft if a draft were ever reinstituted. And I think it's 1A maybe? Is that, am I mixing that up with something else? I think that might be what it is. And here we have not much, which could be a TAD, and a federal program for healthcare coverage. Well, there's Medicare and Medicaid, and they, in the U.S., and their different groups have access to them. I don't know which this applies to, but I suppose they both start with Medica. So we'll put that in there. So this really does look like radio, doesn't it? So broadcast unit that may operate with 50,000 watts. I don't know what the second word is going to be. Blood bill, blood bank donation. Could it be plasma? You, you can donate plasma, blood plasma. And Blank No Sunshine, Bill Withers' classic. I think Ain't No Sunshine is the song. Great, great song. And 21 Across, radio. Oh, is it a radio station? Is that as simple as that? That spells the word adios. Ah, I bet, I bet this is going to be, the circled letters are going to be ways to say goodbye, perhaps, maybe in different languages. So this could be ta-ta. What do we think? Do we think that's likely? And we've got another split answer here. So with 30 across, numbers displayed in row, rows and columns. Yeah, it looks like data something. Data table. There we go. So that would be a data table is numbers displayed in rows and columns. Um, whereas words displayed in rows and columns are a crossword. Well, not necessarily a crossword. I'm just going to jump down here and see if we can uh, finish off this theme. With 51 across, long-lasting cover 
for a house. Long lasting cover of a house. It probably ends in roof, doesn't it? Um, oh no, I'm freezing up. Let's see. Um, I don't know. How embarrassing. Okay, let's <laughs> let's look elsewhere. We're elsewhere, we'll need some crosses. I guess I can see if this water filter brand is Brita Brito filters, and others could be the rest. The others, the rest. A jar cover is a lid. Something to lick on a stick. A lollipop, I guess. Oh, this will be later, as Slate Roof is a long-lasting cover for a house. There we go. So Slate Roof and later. So we have adios, ta-ta, later. So a, a, a fairly modest theme, I would say, in keeping with them, um, with the gentle expectations of a Monday crossword. A gentle theme for a gentle crossword on a gentle day. Well, we hope it's a gentle day. I suppose that's the one over which we have the least control. A cash withdrawal spot is in brief is an ATM. And a chowder morsel could be a clam. You could have clam chowder. The fifth note in an octave scale. I always have to sort of do it in my head because I don't uh, I don't know that this is called the solfege system. I don't know it very well. Uh, anyway, do re mi fa sol la ti do. And I think alternatively spelled without the L, I think it's spelled both ways. Um as so or sol. Okay, so let's see. Inverted pose seen in breakdancing and yoga is a headstand. There we go. Okay, that's simpler than I was making it. I was trying to think of some kind of jargony term for this sort of thing, but no, it's just a headstand, I guess. And a mathematical grouping could be a set. Huh? You could have a data set filling your data table. To send too many emails is to spam your recipients. And night author uh, Wiesel is uh, Eli Wiesel. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. One gold, silver, or bronze would be you meddled. You you won a medal in, say, the Olympics. Okay, so see, oh, right, this is that uh, second part of radio. Maybe it simply is radio station. Again, maybe I'm trying to overcomplicate it, and it's as straightforward as that. So a radio station may operate with 50,000 watts. Traditional Father's Day gifts, I suppose, ties. You see that sort of thing represented in, I don't know, films, I guess. Uh, misled deliberately could be lied to. And a little redhead in a long-running Broadway show would be Annie. Uh, I've never seen any, I don't think I've seen any version of Annie on stage or screen, but aware of her existence, certainly. To infuriate someone is to anger them. And if something is totally pointless, it is what? No use, maybe? Let's check the crosses on that. Fake name given to Odysseus Sorry, fake, names, fake name given by Odysseus to the Cyclops. So this is in the Odyssey. And he calls himself, I suppose it depends how it's been translated. It looks like here it's translated as nobody. I think I, I think I sort of grew up knowing it as no man, but uh, nobody sort of makes his, makes his ruse a bit, fits a bit better because he says, oh, my name is nobody. And then the Cyclops Polyphemus runs around saying, nobody has blinded me, nobody has blinded me. And people say, well, then you must have blinded yourself, you idiot. All right, sports network that airs courtside cinema. NBA TV, I guess. That sounds like the most plausible fill there. National Basketball Association television. And winter setting in New York City is the Eastern Standard Time. I don't know why I paused there. And to fire up is to rev up, to really get going. Uh, oh, uh, Cuba's Guantanamo Bay. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't look at the... The clue. I just looked at the answer, and I thought, "Have I have I misspelled something that will be gaunt?" The phrase "gaunt," but no, unrelated. It's Guantanamo Bay, the location, and locale for a home garden is a yard. Straightforward enough. Start of Juliet's "What's in a name" speech would be Romeo. Yeah, right. So she says, "Oh Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo?" Which means this is probably <laughs> unnecessary to explain in a crossword, but um, she's asking why, not where is he. Um, Wherefore doesn't mean where, uh, uh, means, means why. Okay, the present is now, and Dopey or Sneezy are dwarves. So either one of them is a dwarf. I haven't come across this actually very well. I may have not 
forgotten to mention it recently, but when you have an or clue, it's a singular answer, not a plural, even though we have two examples of the thing in question because we're only referring to one of them. It's Dopey or Sneezy, a dwarf. And 2010's White House family name would be the Obama family. And check out lines. Check out lines. Oh, barcodes. I see. Right. So the question mark indicates some kind of pun or wordplay. And this is referring, in this case, literally to the lines that will be used in a checkout aisle um, or checkout um, line, I guess. What do you call it? Checkout terminal? I'm not sure. Anyway, when, when you scan the barcode to check out at a grocery store. Home of the Raptors on scoreboards. I think the Toronto Raptors. I do think I recognize that. I wonder, is that because you can spell Tor inside of Raptor? Is there any relationship there or is that coincidence? I don't know. Mad Money host Jim Kramer, I think, the man who gets very angry at stocks on television. And collectible tune image is a cell, a a cell of animation in hand-drawn, traditional hand-drawn animated films. Smart guy with a question mark. So again, pun or wordplay. This is smart, smart Alex. So it's just referring to the common phrase for someone who cracks wise, a smart Alec. Okay, touches base before running home, say. So here's another <laughs> basic sports thing, a baseball thing that I basically recognize. Uh, touches base before running home, tags in, I think that is. And lambs, a lamb's mother is a ewe, a female sheep, uh, ewe. Ah, and here we found our revealer, our revealer in its in its relatively close to its most customary home, which would be in the across clues uh, towards the southern border. So actually, I should say the southeastern corner of the grid trending in that direction. Often it's three cells north of the border, this time four cells. Anyway, it's the, the revealer, it's the, the clue and answer that tie together the whole puzzles theme. So it says with 58 across, what this puzzle's circled letters are or what they're doing. So parting words? Um, That fits the theme, which makes me think I might have lollipop wrong, because parting words fits both because adios, tata, and later are parting words. They're words you would say as you part, but also the words themselves are parted by these, by the black cells that interrupt them. So they're parting words in more than one sense. So that makes me think that's what this is. So maybe this isn't lollipop. What is it? Something to lick on a stick. I don't know. Let's just get rid of that and try this and check the crosses here and see if that uh, gives us anything useful. One billionth prefix. Is that nano? Is that what nano is? Is it one billion of something? Or one billionth of something, I should say. Uh, I don't know. A great burden. Great burden could be an onus. Oh, maybe this isn't tags in. Oh, I always become, I always, I'm slightly pleased when I get anything sports related, but then often I don't. Often it ends up being wrong anyway. Maybe it's tags up rather than tags in. Uh, probably is. And then is the Pope Catholic goes the common phrase. And um, 180 degrees from north by northwest would of course be south by southeast. Those are sort of gimmies when you get those. And something to, Oh, it is lollipop. Sorry, I just spelled it incorrectly. After all that, <laughs> sorry. Oof. I guess I was thinking of the contracted form simply lolly, which is which would have an a y, but in the the full word, it is spelled with an i. Sorry about that. I'm sure, plenty of you were e yelling at me through the screen to uh, correct that ages ago. An ex- an exam for an aspiring attorney, I think, is the LSAT, the uh, legalized school admittance test or something legal or standardized. It's either standard achievement or school admittance. It's been explained to me before and I'll, I'll forget this time and I'll forget next time too. Ink stain is a blot. Anyway, it's for, it's for people who want to go to law school, the LSAT. Ink stain is a blot and a kind of computer port for short could be a USB universal serial bus. Maybe is that what that is? Um, open room with natural light is an atrium. And so this looks like Medicaid rather than, rather than Medicare. And actress Viola Offenses is Viola uh, Davis, right? That's her name. Certainly know her. I've seen her in many films, but now I'm slightly doubting my own memory. Um, something renders something null, it voids it. And a little uh, hellion is an imp, a little troublemaker, a little f- troublesome f- force. A fine sediment, fine sediment could be salt. The salt has come up, I think it maybe came up yesterday, actually. And and again, within the, the previous, the preceding week. If something is invisibly small, it is atomic, the size of an atom, too small to see with the naked eye. 
And an impressive feat in baseball is a triple play, I suppose. So we're we're matching our tags up. We've got a parallel baseball clue there. And life or lucky charms. We have another or. Either one of those is a cereal, a breakfast cereal, a dry cereal. Okay, hiking paths are trails. And Iowa Senator, Senator Joni, I don't know. Ernst, maybe? Joni Ernst, is that? It's sort of deep in the recesses of my brain. I'm not sure. Biden's debate opponent in 2008 was Sarah Palin, um, vice presidential candidate. Whoops. Palin. And iridescent gems, opals maybe? Are opals iridescent? I think they are. They have that that uh, sort of swirling quality a bit. A cauldron is a big pot. And a figure that a bank charges for a loan for short is APR, um, I think annualized percentage rate. And a secret meeting between lovers is a tryst, which means indeed Iowa Senator Joni is Ernst. And an unleavened flatbread in Indian cuisine is a roti bread. And makeup of some bunnies could be dust, dust bunnies. The uh, little um, balls of dust you get under, under furniture and things like that. Uh, if one fell asleep quickly, one passed out. And what is this? Affliction that aptly rhymes with I. Well, a sty. You could have a, you could have a sty in your eye. An eye sty. Um, which sounds like some kind of horrible modern convenience device un- that is unnecessary. An online marketplace for crafts is Etsy. Etsy has come up three times maybe in the past few weeks. That's funny. And a location is a site, and this all confirms our eye sty. And there's the puzzle. So there we have it. A good, smooth solving Monday puzzle. Very little, I think, to stay in our way between uh, an empty grid and a completed grid that will allow us to march into the rest of our uh, working week with confidence, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it was a fairly gentle Monday puzzle with a fairly gentle theme. Uh, the sort of theme that you you could, I think you could basically march through this puzzle, solving the theme without paying much attention to it, to it, or you could do what I did, figure it out and try and use it to get yourself a few more cells. Um, but there were only three real theme answers anyway. And then uh, parting words was a very clever, a very clever pun and a definition to sum the theme up. So nice, gentle theme for a nice, gentle puzzle on what we hope will be a nice, gentle Monday. But at least this part of it was nice and gentle. So that's something. And now... Why don't we discuss some clues from yesterday's puzzle? As I said, there were um, there were a few. So let's get those loaded up here. The F and Crow explains that the Wii Mini, which was the Nintendo console with which I was unfamiliar in yesterday's puzzle, was a late revision of the Wii that came out first in Canada for some reason. It was a top loader. I guess that means you put the disc? Do the Wii use discs? Did it use cartridges? Honestly, I don't remember at all. Anyway, it was a top loader that got rid of online support, GameCube support, and support for component video cables in order to shrink it to where it could be sold for $100. It must have used discs. Anyway, um, that's interesting. I, did, I don't think I was aware of that. Um, they really got rid of quite a lot, didn't they? Uh, Chasmart. Uh, this, so this is regarding the uh, concept of drinking ale for nutritional value in the uh, medieval era. And Chesmart explains that monks would craft ales that were heavy on the hops and barley, some known as double bock, being so stout. Oh, yeah, I have heard of double bock. Uh, ales actually still exist, I suppose. Uh, being so stout that they derive their nutritional value during times of fast. Interesting. So I didn't, uh, I did not know that. So that's good to know. And that ties into um, the Trappist uh, question. And I had mentioned, I think, in solving the puzzle, that there there is now a Trappist brewery in Britain, in England specifically, and uh, I was slightly, I, I, as I often do when I have to pull these things out of my brain, I, I'm, not, I'm never quite sure if I'm getting them right because sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm misremembering things. Uh, in this case, I did correctly remember that there was a relatively uh, recently established Trappist beer in England, and Rahul Ricky explains Tint Meadow is a Trappist brewery in the Midlands and is the only one in England. It's very tasty stuff. The craft beer shop I work in sells a decent amount of Belgian beers, which means I always have a healthy supply. Um, that's great. That um, I think I've actually had it now that I 
now that I, I, I looked up the name of the beer and it's uh, Tint Meadow and it's got an absolutely gorgeous bottle. It's very, very nice looking beer. And I believe I have had it before and it's brewed at Oh, I don't remember the name of the brewery. St. Bernard's or something. It's something like it's something around St. Bernard in I think Leicestershire and it is the fir- it was the abbey itself was established in the mid 19th century and was the first abbey established since the reformation and of course um during the reign of Henry VIII, Henry there was the dissolution of the monastery. All of the monasteries were were essentially reclaimed by the state. And so England England's monastic tradition was essentially destroyed and then only started to creep back in in the mid uh, the mid 19th century including this abbey but it was only in 2018 that they began brewing uh, this beer and uh, and became the first trappist beer so it's a, it is a trappist abbey it is a, a monks who follow the the sort of trappist um oh code of conduct, I suppose. It's, it's a fairly strict, it's a fairly strict monastic code, I believe. It's, it derives from the Benedictines. But anyway, I'm going far, <laughs> far too much unnecessary detail here. Point being, since 2018, there is a, an officially recognized Trappist beer brewed in England, and it's called Tint Meadow, and I think it's quite good. So, uh, ADYJ1411 explains that on tilt refers to a poker player in a downward spiral and thus making overly aggressive moves instead of the most optimal ones because they aren't in the right mindset. Mindset. Nowadays, many video gamers will, will refer to those getting frustrated over a game going south as being tilted. So I didn't I actually didn't know that phrase, I don't think. Um, but that's very good context. And yes, on tilt was an answer in yesterday's puzzle and I wasn't completely familiar with it uh, and certainly wasn't aware of um, it's history in poker or honestly in video games either. So thank you, ADYJ1411. I'm sure there's a better, more efficient way to pronounce your name, but I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> Adage maybe. Okay. I'm sorry. Kathy Swope, uh, explains sick S I C the bracketed, um, sort of explanatory phrase that's included next to a typo says the definition is the word is quoted exactly as it stands in the original and is Latin for so or thus. In other words, you would have, you'd reproduce an error as it was originally represented and you'd put sick meaning it is so, or it is thus. And uh, Retboy1 further explains there that sick is a shortened ver- version of the Latin phrase sick erat scriptum, which translates to thus it is written. And as Kathy Swope points out in her comment, it translates to thus or so. And then Retboy1 also explains uh, I understand on end to mean without stop, as in end on end on end, i.e. something interminable or something like it rained for days on end. It rained for days without stop. So th- there you go. Very good. I had a tough time for some reason coming up with on end examples, but it rained for days on end is a perfect example to explain why that phrase means without stop, as was clued in the puzzle yesterday. And ZOR95 explains that osmosis is a bit more specific than you mentioned. It is the net motion of solvent materials, usually water, through a selectively permeable membrane, with the overall motion being from the more dilute sub-solution or high water potential to the more concentrated solution, low water potential, until equilibrium has been reached. Yes, that's true. I didn't mention that osmosis usually happens through some kind of permeable membrane. That is true. You wouldn't call it osmosis if it were just you know, some water in a here, you pour some other water in a bucket. That wouldn't really be osmosis. Uh, anyway, and obviously ZOR95 correctly indicates the, the direction of travel there. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that clarification. And uh, Michael Trick explains the notion of trophy, meaning net in the puzzle yesterday. I took some guesses. Don't think I was correct in any of my guesses. The actual answer is teams that win the NCAA basketball championship traditionally cut down the nets on the basket rims, and that is the trophy. And any prophet says players take turns snipping off segments of the net until it comes off the rim. Everyone gets to keep their own little trophy of the game. I had no idea. So that's that's a very nice tradition. So there we have it. And look at that. That was quite a few answers. So again, as befits a big Sunday grid, plenty of things, plenty of opportunities for me to uh, get things wrong. So thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. Thank you for um, joining me. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. 
and uh, like the video, I suppose, if you liked the video. I assume if you made it this far, you must have. So I think I'm only giving this instruction to people who are safe to receive it. And um, if you know someone who might like this series, pass it along to them, either directly, person to person, or through your online community of choice. And I didn't mention our our little community, the Daily Solve Discord chat server. I haven't mentioned that today. Uh, it's free for anybody to join. But of course, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you also get access to that Extra Solvers Society channel. Very exclusive. And, uh, but of course, it's free for everyone to join more broadly. And I think that's it today. You can follow me on Twitter at The Daily Solve. And I can't think of anything else to uh, to say to continue to eat up your time on this Monday. So I will let you go. I'll be back tomorrow for another fairly gentle themed puzzle, the Tuesday puzzle. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. <laughs>